Have you ever found yourself tangled in the complexities of Java Enterprise Beans, wondering about dependencies? If that sounds like you, you're in the right place. Today, we're diving into the world of EJBs and runtime dependencies. I totally get it. Dealing with dependencies can be a real headache, especially when it comes to ensuring everything works seamlessly together. You're not alone in this struggle. Many developers face similar challenges. Let's break down the specific question at hand. One user asked, should the client artifact have a runtime dependency on the implementation artifact, or should we avoid these circular dependencies? This is a common dilemma in EJB development. Understanding the relationship between your client and implementation artifacts is crucial. The client artifact contains interfaces, while the implementation artifact holds the actual code. This means that at runtime, the client needs access to the implementation to function correctly. Stay with me, because by the end of this video, you'll have a clear understanding of how to manage these dependencies effectively. And I promise you won't want to miss the final tip. To address the user's question about dependencies, we first need to clarify the relationship between the client and implementation artifacts. The user has mentioned that the implementation artifact depends on the client artifact for compilation. Next, let's discuss the runtime requirements. The user pointed out that the client artifact needs the implementation artifact at runtime for the container to inject the required objects. This is a crucial point. Now, the user is wondering if this means the client artifact should have a runtime dependency on the implementation artifact. The answer is yes, but with caution. Circular dependencies can lead to complications. To avoid potential issues, the user should consider using a dependency injection framework. This can help manage the dependencies more effectively and reduce the risks associated with circular dependencies. In summary, while the client artifact should have a runtime dependency on the implementation artifact, it's essential to manage these dependencies carefully to maintain a clean architecture. Fun fact, did you know that the concept of circular dependencies is often compared to a game of tug of war? Each side pulls, but if they pull too hard, they might just end up in a knot. Now let's look at the answers provided by other users. The user suggests that the client artifact should not have a runtime dependency on the implementation artifact. They emphasize that the client should not depend on implementations to adhere to the dependency inversion principle. Instead, they recommend declaring the implementation dependency in the ER deployment unit, as the ER is responsible for assembling the enterprise application. The user acknowledges that managing dependencies can be tedious, but they highlight that the Java EE specification allows for tools to assist in this process. They suggest that using an ARPOM can streamline dependency management, making it easier than relying on private scripts. That's the end of that answer. Let's see another perspective. This user suggests that you don't need to worry about the client's dependency on the implementation. The EJB container handles this by creating a proxy for the implementation, so the client never directly references it. They provide an example of a Maven configuration for the EJB and ER files. The EJB POM includes dependencies for the Java E API and the API artifact, while the ER POM ensures the correct structure for the ER file. Here's the tip I promised. Always aim for loose coupling in your architecture. This not only makes your code cleaner, but also easier to maintain and test in the long run. And there you have it. You've gained insights into managing EJB dependencies effectively. Remember, clear architecture leads to smoother development. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe for more tips and tricks.